Yes, Torin. Would, would he get double scoops of ice cream if he dunked on Christ Kamaji? No. And I don't even want to start that because that means that he's going to block um, TD shot about a thousand times. Um, <laughs> one scoop. If you are, if we're lucky enough to get out of Florida State with a win, it's just one scoop this time around. Are they the one team where even you have trouble to figure out what, how many players are in their rotation and what their names are? You know what? Um, like nine they, different guys have led them in scoring this year. Yeah, what's underrated about them is exactly what you said. Um, they've got – they play 11 guys. And um, – they do a great job with it, and you know when we were going over scout report, we broke it up. Uh, we gave out the first six, um, and then and then we'll go over the next five today. We broke up the last six yesterday. We'll go over the uh, other five today. The guys who really play in the game, and you know we've told our guys that this is more about personnel than just the team because you've got to know each individual guy that you're playing against and what their strengths and weaknesses are because everybody brings something different to the table. Playing them only one time and this deep into the season, how far back do you go back scouting them? Do you do the whole season or you just look at most recent? Well, what we try to do is um, we'll go back at least four or five games, but I'll also go back uh, if they played somebody in the non-conference that I felt like played the way we played. Mm -hmm. um, or they do ball screen coverage the way we cover ball screens or offensively they do some of the same things. So a lot of times with scouting, you want to get back to five or six games into you know the latest games they play, but if there are some similarities to some teams that they may have played non-conference, then obviously we look at that. When they're at their best, what do they do? Well, well they they're playing faster than people think. Um, they do a great job. Um, you know, Leonard has changed over the last two or three years uh, on a defensive end. Um, they used to be more laid back half court and defend you that way. Now they pressure the basketball. Uh, they'll get up and down with you. They, they have the ability to switch all five screens, uh, which cause problems because they're long and athletic and be able to keep guys in front. And so, you know, those are the things that we've got to concentrate with. Obviously, there's a, a huge size advantage that they have, and we've got to do a great job of trying to block out and get second opportunities and try to get rebounds and get out and run. This is a team that certainly comes at you in waves. Is it helpful to have maybe a little bit of a break heading into this game? Well, breaks are tricky. Uh, and I said this um, after we won the Wake Forest game. When you're playing good basketball at that time, we won four out of five. You know, you want to continue to play. Uh, that being said, it is late in the season where I'm okay making sure that we had a few days off. Um, however we cut it, we've only got nine guys that we're putting in the game. And so certainly any time that you can have an advantage because you've been able to rest some guys for a couple of days, certainly we hope it helps. Torrance said it's impossible not to hear some of the noise about brackets and bubbles and all that stuff. How do you keep these kids focused on the task at hand? I, I, tried to, I haven't talked about it, but as I said this, I think I said it last year, these guys are smart enough to know what's going on and uh, we don't talk about it. I, I've only talked about Florida State with these guys. Haven't talked about the big picture. Um, uh, we may have had a conversation saying here the final games that we have, but we haven't talked about anything as far as selection or NCAA at all. How valuable is Torin, and where do you think your program would be the last two years without him? He's very valuable. Um, I, I said this. Um, I had individual meetings with every guy yesterday. And I, I talked about how important his experience has been um, for him, obviously playing his second year. Uh, when you look at the roster, we've got you know three guys that played for me last year, and then you know C.J. Rice is the other important guy because he's been able to go to the NCAA twice, also. And so those guys, those four, I really talked about helping the other five guys understand how to finish the season. Uh, nothing about obviously postseason, but how important it will be for those guys in the locker room and finishing the season and taking one game at a time. Do you ever worry about him? I mean, he seems to show up in some kind of category every single game. No, I, you know, I'm excited um, that I have had the opportunity to coach him. He's a great kid. Um, you know, when you look at his year last year, I thought coming in the system was great for him and he did a great job fitting into the system. And then he's been very valuable for us this year. Um, he's a guy that allows us to be able to play small um, because he does a great job rebounding his position. If he couldn't rebound, we probably couldn't play that way. How critical, okay. I was gonna say, how critical is that position to what you guys wanna do in this offense? You know, what Torin's been able to do, and you talked about a little bit the rebounding acumen too, but how critical is that for this offense as a whole? Well, it's, it's very critical. Uh, 
especially with our personnel that we have this year. Um, you know, the plans, obviously, if we've had more guys with, to be able to play a DJ Funderburg or Jericho Hellams as a freshman. Now he'll be a sophomore next year. Those guys is more in torn Dorn spot. Um, and so when you say we're playing four guards, we still get, you know, we'll we change and have two skilled forwards that could play his position. He allows us to do a lot of things because his ability to, to be able to guard one through four, his ability to, you know, put the ball on the floor and get to the rim and make some shots. Um, and so his position is very critical for us because uh, many people, though you think it would be an advantage, it's not because he doesn't lose his battle most of the time. You ever find yourself talking to other 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", high school kids and showing them what Torn has done for you and, and basically explaining how they could come to NC State and, and play that role? Well, my, my poster boy for all of this is how this all started is I, I had Dez Wells, who's from around here, and P.J. Harrison on the same team. And um, I had to figure out how to get both of those guys on the floor. They both were, in my opinion, small forwards at the time. And, and so we decided to, you know, because P.J. could shoot the ball and get an advantage, you know, we played him as a forward. So I, I started with him. And then when I was at Wilmington, we had the young man, Chris Flemings, who graduated, uh, who was a Division II guy who played the same way. And now it will be Torrin Dorn that can play that position. So for probably, I would say, my last few years, I've been able to have a guy who could rebound his position but give us some type of advantage at that spot. What have your conversations with Markel been like? Obviously, he played really well against Wake Forest. How do you try to get that version of him for this yeah. last stretch here? Yeah, we talked about consistency. I, I told him, I said, man, you're one of the most experienced guards in the ACC, and I don't want a game where you play great and then you drop off a little bit. So uh, I've talked to him about having it carry over from practice, being more of a leader in practice. You know, when you get to this time of year, uh, veterans are smart enough to know how to cruise through practice, and hopefully it pays off for them in the game. And I've talked to all of those guys from Torrin to Markel, put the work in in practice. We're not going very long in practice, really on the floor. We're probably going about an hour. You know, most of our practices are about, you know, film work and understanding that. So he's one of the guys that I've challenged to say, do a better job of preparing yourself for the game. You feel like somebody who appreciates a good sweat? That was a Patrick Ewing level sweat that Markel had against Wake Forest. I say that as the highest compliment. Yeah, you know, you know, I'm one of those guys that maybe, maybe it was the gray uniforms that kind of showed the sweat a little bit more. <laughs> um, <laughs> But he did sweat, and you know, it, it, and I, it's funny that you say that because <laughs> I look at guys and when they come off the floor and they ain't sweating, I'm saying, man, you ain't working hard enough. Um, you know, there's a direct so, line there. Coach. Yeah, so maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, just maybe, it may be those gray uniforms, or maybe we've turned the corner as far as guys working a little harder or putting in more work into that. I would tell KB to burn the undershirt because if Markel shows up in the undershirt, that's that's. The canary does not come out of the coal mine on it. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't deal with undershirts. I don't know what they're... <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the splits if you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Good so luck.